Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I'm going to explain to you why calorie restriction or calorie restricted diets fail and why these diets are not the way, uh, will never lead to long lasting weight loss. And I'm going to do that by explaining and describing to you two separate uh, images here. Um, so you'll want to look at these. I'll explain them. You don't have to worry about that, but we're going to talk about how these impact the, ch the changes and what occurs with calorie restriction and why that type of diet will never lead to long lasting weight loss. And just so you know, all of this information is coming from this study, um, metabolic adaptation to weight loss implications for the athlete, where we talk about a lot of this physiology. So this is all scientific um, information available to everybody. It's been out since 2014. So let's talk about this because it's really, really important. Um, and I think it has to do with why there are so many people who struggle to lose weight, why they can't lose weight. And it has to do with the way that we look at weight loss in general. And so let's just take a look at this diagram. Um, so if you can imagine, um, this is what happens in your body when you undergo a calorie restricted diet. So first of all, your energy intake goes down. Of course, that's going to happen. The whole idea of a calorie restricted diet is to reduce the total amount of calories that you are consuming. And you can do this through any diet. Okay, you could calorie restrict a paleo diet, you could do this with a ketogenic diet, you could do this with an unhealthy diet, you could do this with the HCG diet, it doesn't matter. A reduction in energy intake simply means that you are reducing the amount of calories that you um, are consuming relative to the amount that your body needs to burn on a daily basis. That's known as you, you know your total um, energy expenditure. Okay, so if you if you and this could be done just by consuming 1,200 calories or 1,500 calories if you normally burn 2,000. Okay, so all this happens in this setting. So you re first thing that happens, you reduce your energy intake, and that's how all diets start, right? They all start this way. Then what happens? Two things usually happen. Number one, you go into what's called an energy deficit, meaning you are burning more calories than you're consuming, and you think, oh, yes, this is going to be great. I'm going to lose weight. Um, and number two, your body mass tends to go down. Okay, now this is sometimes a combination of fat mass and, and muscle mass, but either way, your body mass goes down, and you think to yourself, this is great. I'm finally losing weight. And that's all that you look at, right? You just look at these two things, and that's what everyone that's what everyone tells you. If you're not losing weight, you need to do these two things. But if you look at this, these two things are only a small part of this whole equation. And what you need to be focusing on is what what do these two things? What is the effect of these two things on the rest of your body? And that's where the whole the rest of the story comes into play. And that's where all the problems come in. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all. At, when you're in an, in an energy deficit, meaning you are burning more calories than you consume, and your body mass goes down, these two things send signals to your body. Okay, so you can you see both arrows going down here. They send signals to your body, and this results in something called metabolic adaptation. And this has been going on, this has been well known for a very, very, very long time. And this right here is the reason that there, there is a statistic out there that says that 99% um, of calorie restricted diets fail. What that means, let me qualify that statement. It means that you might lose a little bit of weight with your calorie restricted diet, but 99% of the time you're going to regain that weight back. And these are not, that's not a made up number. In fact, it's, this is just the data. It's, it's actually about one in 216. So it's, like 99.5 or something like that. I don't know. I'm not doing the math. But the point is about you have about a 1 in a 200 chance of keeping weight off if you restrict your calories in the way that I'm telling you right now. Terrible odds, right? That's very terrible. And the reason for that has to do with this thing called metabolic adaptation. Now, you don't need to know like the decreased uncoupled, uncoupled respiration and, and such. You don't have to worry about why it happens. I'll give you an abbreviated version. This is kind of what's happening at the cellular level. But essentially what happens is the signal that your body gets when you're when there's um, an energy deficit and your body mass is going down, it says, hold on, we can't, we can't sustain this forever. And so it makes several changes to TRH, to TSH, and to your mitochondria. Okay, that's those. That's the energy uh, powerhouse of your uh, in all of your cells. It makes changes to those things, and it slows down the amount of calories that you burn because your body doesn't want to waste them. And this is sometimes referred to as starvation mode, this metabolic adaptation. And the net result of metabolic adaptation is a decrease in energy expenditure and an increase in hunger because your body senses that you don't have enough calories and it says we need to go back to where we were before so we're going to send powerful signals to the body to eat that that make you want to eat food so that you can get that hunger back so that you can consume more food and in the process we are going to decrease your energy expenditure now energy expenditure 
is a big part of this equation. I'm going to go to a second image just to talk about that. But I want to make sure you guys understand what's happening. So calorie restriction, decrease in body mass, and an increase in energy deficit causes metabolic adaptation, aka you can think of it as starvation mode, which causes a decrease in your metabolism. And we'll talk about why that is so important right now through this image. So this is another really powerful image. So most people, they, they think to themselves, well, that's not a problem because what I'll do is I will just exercise more. So even if my metabolism is damaged a little bit, I know what I can do. I can just exercise a little bit more. And we're going to talk about why that will never work. Okay, that will never, ever, 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 ever work. And here's why. Um, this, what this does is this uh, graph here represents how many, the percentage um, and where the percentage come from of the, of the amount of calories that you burn each and every day. And it breaks it down. Okay, so you don't have to worry about these things. I'll explain them to you. But BMR stands for your basal metab metabolic rate, which you can think of as your metabolism. And that is a, a, this fraction is known as your resting energy expenditure. Okay, so 70% of the amount of calories that you burn every day, and you can consider this the, just whatever the amount that you burn. It could be 2,000 or 1,900 or 2,100 or 1,500. doesn't matter. This is a percentage. So 70% of the amount of the calories that you burn comes from your resting energy expenditure, which is just the calories that are required for you to live. Just for you to, your cells to function, for your heart to beat, for your brain to be working, 70% of those calories comes from that, okay? So already, best case scenario, you can burn 30% if you're exercising, but that's not actually true. So then this, then the, the rest of this is called non-resting energy expenditure, and this comes from other factors. So the NEAT, which looks to be about 15% or so, um, that is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is the amount of heat that your body produces. Okay, so you're already up to 85%. Then TEF, and TEF um, stands for thermogenic effect of food. So you're, the TEF is the amount of energy that your body takes to um, just simply break down food. So now you're up to 95%. Okay, we haven't even talked about exercise. And then this, this top up here called EAT. Now, um, the EAT you can think about is the amount of energy that your body uh, consumes while exercising and it stands for exercise activity thermogenesis okay so then put this into context five percent of the amount of calories that you burn or the number of calories that you burn each and every day comes from the how much you're exercising so let's take let's go back to our let's go back to this graph and say okay first of all energy expenditure goes down Right, we know that, which is represented here. So let's say that you that you take a hit of uh, 30%. So your resting energy expenditure goes from 70% down to 40%. So you say, okay, well, I just lost 30% of my calories. What you probably don't realize is that's a huge fraction of the whole. But you say to yourself, I know, I'll just exercise more. So let's say you're let's say you're exercising 30 minutes a day, and that's what you did to lose weight. Even if you bumped it up to two hours, or uh, let's say one hour per day, you doubled the amount of of activity that you're doing. You're only gonna double that to from 5% to 10%. So at a 2000 calorie diet, you can only burn an extra 100 calories from calories per day just by doubling the amount that you're exercising. And in the process, because you did the calorie restriction, you're losing 30%, which is about 600 calories per day that you're losing from that metabolic damage. That's a battle that you will never, ever, ever win. So you're losing, you, you think you can make up the difference by exercising, but in reality, the damage to your metabolism from the changes to the diet far uh, far outweigh any benefit that you could get from exercising. And that's why calorie-restricted diets never, ever work. Now, instead, you have to look at different mechanisms to, let's say, trick your body um, into losing weight without doing this. And I have some videos which talk about that, but that's not the, that's not the goal of uh, today's video. Um, this is just to explain in a, in a, you know, in a simple, easy to understand way why these diets always fail and why they're going to continue to fail forever. It doesn't matter. You can put, you can put a, slap a new name on it, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter that calorie restricted diets in general will never lead to long lasting weight loss. So now I want to hear from you guys. So have you tried calorie restricted diets? Did they not work for you? Um, it, help, you know, tell, Give us your story below. If you have any questions, leave them below as well. Um, I'll do my best to answer each and every question or, or comment that I receive, but I want you guys to know this because this is really, really, really valuable information. So if you thought it was helpful, feel free to uh, um, like or leave a comment or subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.